Welcome everyone to today's video. We're the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Alfira Boulay. And in today's video, we're going to talk about trills. A few, I don't know if it was weeks or months ago, but you made a video about ornaments. Mm -hmm. What was it? Ornaments only? Ornaments. Ornaments. <laughs> Elvira made a video about ornaments and we got a, recently a request uh, by somebody who wanted that we make a video about trills. And since trills come very often in variety of pieces, we thought it's actually a, a good request, quite a relevant request that's going to help a lot of people. Before we start the video, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. And also, don't forget that if you have a topic that you would like to know more about, that you leave us a comment because we love to make content that is relevant to you. So the first thing that I think about when I think about a trill is fingering. Because um, I think that you have to... A trill is pretty tricky and I think you have to find a fingering that is comfortable to you. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a few fingerings that can be very comfortable but it does depend on the scenario. So I do different fingerings. I choose different fingering for different trills. But I'll give you the most common ones that I think will be, you'll, you'll be sure to find something that's comfortable for you. So we have one, two. We have one, three. So that's the thing with trills. It doesn't have to be always the, the next finger. One, three can sometimes be very comfortable as well. Then you have two, three. And then you have 2-4 as well. I can do that too. Of course, you also have 3 and 4 and 4 and 5, but those are not so common and those are quite tricky. So it's not a must, depending on the piece that you are playing, it's not a must that you have to exercise those. Of course, if you are ambitious and if you are interested in that, feel free to do that because it could be useful. It's definitely not uh, out of the question. It's definitely in the repertoire. It so. definitely ha uh, comes in the repertoire that you have to do trills with 4-5. Yeah. I've definitely encountered that. But my first tip, to be honest, would be, you know, you have enough things to work on in the, when you're working Absolutely. on the piano literature. So choose a fingering that's comfortable. And the ones that we mentioned, you're sure to find something that's comfortable. Now, let's go to the exercise. So you can pick any two notes. We're going to start, the exercise is going to involve two, three, four, and six notes. We're going to start with two notes. Uh, that's going to mean that every two notes, you, you're going to have a tick of the metronome. So for example, what I mean by this is you're going to have two notes. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But you're going to put the metronome and you're going to time your first note with each tick. Now, when you're comfortable, you can you can speed up the tempo. That's also very useful. You see that my first note comes with each tick of the metronome. And so you can anticipate, you can guess already that the other three, four and six notes is going to be something similar. I'm going to demonstrate. Now let's move on to three notes. Here it's something important that you have to know. You are going to, since you're going to have three notes, it's an uneven number. And so you will not be able to time the tick of the metronome with every E flat. I'm going to continue. I'm going to stick with the E flat and F so you don't get confused. We're going to have a tick on the E flat here. That, those are three notes. And then on the F, then on the E flat, and then on the F because of having only three notes. Now, this is the tempo. This is 86. Of course, that's very general. You're going to do it according to your needs, but you're going to exercise like this. If you want with some accents, if you want without accents, and of course, you can speed up when you feel better, that you're getting more comfortable. Etc. So you can speed up like this. And this is going to be the exercise with three notes. With four notes, you're going to have... You simply play four notes and you time with on every fifth note with the metronome. That's 
that's going to be the exercise. And then you have the last exercise is going to be six, six. notes. And so with six notes, you put the metronome a little slower so it can fit your needs and you go with six notes. Then you time every note, of course, because it's an even number, you time it together every time with the E flat. Now, I think this is a little bit something that if you see Dimitar doing it, you say, oh, that's easy. And then you start doing it yourself. You might have a little trouble at first actually dividing the notes. And a quick little tip would be just to count out loud. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then for you, when you want to divide them into one in, into three, that you just count out loud. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and the same with one, two, three, four, and the same with the six. So if you have trouble timing them actually, or like you're losing counts, you don't know how many notes you've actually played, just count out loud. And, and of course, as always, don't do it too fast in the beginning. You'll, you'll yeah. get the hang of it the... after a little while, you can speed up then. That's the most, that's, that's probably one of the most important advices that we always give. Don't do it too fast. Everybody starts too fast. They can't, they can't follow the notes and they just go, they just forget about the exercise and go to the trills. But you need to stick to the exercise and you need to do it really from a very slow and gradually increase because once you start having a feeling for this, you, you're going to see that you will benefit. But we're going to explain how you're going to combine now this exercise in order to see some results because it's not only this that you have to do. What is the, the real challenge with the trill? Of course, it's a challenge to play the notes quickly, but the second challenge is actually to time it properly. And this exercise, dividing it in two, three, uh, four and six actually prepares you for all kinds of different scenarios because every trill will be timed differently. And if you're prepared for different scenarios, you'll always be able to time your trill properly. And uh, I just forgot because I just showed the exercise two, three, four and six notes with second and third finger. Don't forget that what Elvira mentioned in the beginning of the video is find the suitable fingering in your, for your needs and for your piece. Might be necessary that you do it with three and four then of course you have to exercise with three and four or one and two. So don't stick to only the keys that Elvira showed, C and D or what I showed, and not only to one and the same fingering. Exercise this with different notes and different fingers. So this exercise is leading up to our final actually experiment, which is to see if we can do a trill fast and if we can time it properly to end right where we're supposed to end. So we're going to put the metronome. We're going to trill as fast as possible. We're not going to think about how to divide them per, per how many notes. You're just going to go do it as fast as possible and end again on the beat. So let's try. Exactly. So you're going to see if you can end exactly on the beat of the metronome. And if you, like I held it now for a little while, right? How, how many beats did I actually hold it? You, you did it, you started on the first tick and on the second tick you stopped. Right. So if, if that goes well, extend it a little bit. And you can extend it even longer if you want. Depends also a little bit uh, what kind of trills you have in the piece you're currently practicing. What are you having trouble with? Are you having trouble with longer trills? Or if you're having trouble with shorter trills? So that is actually our final kind of exercise slash experiment. And but this is more, you can think of it as um, when you play a piece of music, at the end of your practice session, you might want to try your piece in a fast tempo, right? It's like a performance. And it doesn't matter if you suck because most likely you are going to, if you're not used to, like, let's say that uh, you, you go with, for example, you're doing this with four and five and it feels really difficult and it's an even, it's not good, but it doesn't matter. You just go and you can continue and you try to just time it with the metronome because when you do that and you go back to the exercise four and five, let's say, you time two notes, three notes, four, six, and then again you try at some point, your trill is going to start being faster and with time it's going to improve. So it's exactly what you're basically saying is, it's a performance, you yeah. you play and if it's bad, it's bad. It doesn't it doesn't mean anything, you just go back to the exercise. Exactly, so, so this final exercise, like, like I called it experiment, the final experiment, is yeah. more to see where you're at. Yeah. And then if you wanna, repeat something again, repeat the first exercise that we gave with the metronome with the dividing the notes, because that's going to really shoot your trail upwards.
personally, and I think it is also different per person, but personally, I find trails to be pretty tricky. And I think yeah. that it's, um, it, it is a bit of a long-term investment. I would definitely advise you that even if you're, you're watching this and you don't have a piece currently with trails, I would 100% cycle this into your regular practice routine because it's gonna give you so much pleasure if you already start, if you have some basic skills for trills. And I, I think that's something, it's something that you shouldn't just practice when you're having a piece with a trill because that's just shame. And you might be very frustrated that your trill doesn't work. I think it's a general thing that you have to exercise. And that's what I would advise to you. Be patient with yourself, but also make sure that you generally, that you exercise this regularly. Plus I have one thing to add before we finish the video. This actually, I realized that practicing trills and timing them, you're ac you're basically working on your timing as well. You're not working just on trill. If you have to time two or three notes, you're going to develop better rhythm just because you're timing two notes, three notes, four and six with a metronome. So don't underestimate any exercise that we are giving you because you can sometimes, and we don't have time to mention all the benefits you get from these exercises. Anyway. If you have any questions, further questions on trills, ornaments, whatever it is, pieces that you're playing, again, feel free to comment down below. We'll be happy to answer you and we'll be happy to schedule a video for you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You help us enormously by doing that. We appreciate and we're very thankful to all those of you who already subscribed because our channel started growing that way and we are very happy to reach more people. Thank you so much uh, to the person that left a comment and requested this video. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing that. We, I hope that you will benefit from this video. And um, yeah, for us recording the video, as always, was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.